Hey guys, it's Amber here at Gear Up, and I am currently standing in our survival outdoor camping room, uh, which even though we have different rooms, military surplus is really spread throughout. But today we are going to be talking about wool blankets, government issued wool blankets, as well as secondhand or not secondhand, but mill spec type wool blankets and things of that nature. And the reason they're in the survival room, even though this is also a surplus item, is wool blankets are actually a great survival gear item to possess. And we're going to talk a little bit about a little bit in details about the history as well as the way that they can be utilized for survival uses. And it's kind of surprising to some that they may be. Uh, we've worked with a couple nonprofits um, throughout last year. And we'll continue to work this year that purchase stuff in bulk from us to send over to Ukraine. One of the items that they do purchase from us are these wool blankets because they have so many great uses beyond just keeping you warm. Keeping you warm, they obviously do that being the wool, but we're going to talk a little bit about this. So wool blankets themselves have actually been used by military uh, and, and different countries dating back to the 14, 1500s. Uh, the French heavily used it. And then when the new world was discovered it became a major export item uh for the british here uh import export item for the british here and they they brought it over and it became a great trading tool for them with the native americans and the reason why the native americans love these wool blankets is because of their dual uses they would they would cut them up use them as parkas because a lot of the native americans were up in canada with the french um, and it became a major tool for them to get it out there who were defending the land as they allied with uh, with the French or fought the French, depending on the circumstance. I'm not too sure about Canadian history. My wife, uh, my wife could probably tell me a little bit more about that. But anyways, getting to the uses. So the wool blankets were used by the Native Americans. And then when it came to revolutionary times, civil war times, and then all the way through the Korean War times, um, and even today, our U.S. military heavily uses wool fabric. Wool blankets are used, obviously, but even you look at the dress uniforms, specifically like marine uniforms, you look at parkas and things of that nature, um, the sweaters, the over-the-top three-button sweaters, the acrylic v-neck sweaters, all made of primarily wool. Now, getting 100% wool items is a, very rare these days, so it's a lot of a synthetic type blend mostly, but wool itself obviously has a lot of perks. Um, the wool itself has a protein that is used by sheep. I think it's carotonin, if I'm not mistaken, as the protein is, is noon. And what it does is it helps regulate body temperature. So you see sheep that have all this wool on them, which is where wool obviously comes from, has all this wool on them, and they're able to survive and be comfortable in cold elements as well as warmer elements. And reason being is wool has a lot of great items, and we're going to get into the survival aspects of these. So the wool blankets themselves what they do is they're actually able to trap your body heat kind of like the new gen 3 uh cold weather stuff that we have but the wool is able to trap your body heat and keep you warm um but beyond the trapping the body heat so in colder weathers which is why the native americans loved it so much as they put it on as park because it trapped their body heat kept them warm it also is moisture wicking so wool believe it or not is waterproof as well as fireproof which makes it a huge, huge, huge perk for survival situations. Um, so with it being waterproof, it also means it's moisture wicking. So if you do get hot, it's able to, to wick away your material. You can obviously shed it if need be. But in colder climates where it's trapping your body heat, if it gets to a point where you are sweating a little bit, it's going to wick away that sweat for you, still keep you warm and still keep you somewhat comfortable where you're not shedding it and freezing. Uh, so that's a major survival per perk is both the trapping of the heat and then it's waterproof ability the moisture wicking ability from the waterproof ability now from survival uses the reason this is great too that it's waterproof is if you are out on the land and all you have is a wool blanket this becomes a great item you can put over as a tent it's a great item you can turn into a sleeping bag by different ways of folding it and wrapping your body in it because it's going to trap that heat and it's also moisture wicking if it acts as a tent and it rains it is going to absorb that water before it actually seeps through the material so you are going to have the ability to use this and keep yourself dry from a poncho standpoint if you don't have a poncho when you're on you you should have ponchos in your bug out bag which you know we got that bug out bag series coming another video is coming out here soon um 
but the it might be out by the time I make this actually. The uh, but the wool blankets act both waterproof and then from a camping standpoint, if you do have a campfire, you need to put it out or the fire begins to stain. It being fireproof, you're able to just kind of throw this over the actual fire to prevent it from burning as it'll trap the heat and eventually allow the fire to die out. So that's two major, major areas that wool becomes great use for survival purposes, for outdoor camping type purposes. And they're just very basic uh, type examples that you can kind of use wool. So moisture wicking, waterproof, fireproof, traps your body heat, are, are some of the major reasons, major uses that you can use for wool blankets, turning it into a tent, turning it into a sleeping bag, and then obviously just using it as a straight up blanket. It's also comfortable enough where if you have your own sleeping bag or you have a tent, you can use it as a sleeping pad. So if you don't have the GI foam sleeping pads, which we also carry here in the store, you can use wool blankets for sleeping pads. Preferably, you are going to want to try to get a wool blanket that is at least 90 to 100%. Those are rarer to come by. However, if you do get one that is synthetic and a blend, you are still going to get these great purposes and these great perks for it. So that kind of sums up in a nutshell um, the survival uses, the, a little bit of the history when it comes to the wool blankets. We have a more in-depth explanation blog post on wool blankets, their history and their great uses for survival purposes in the military history that you can check out on our website. There'll be a link in the description below. So um, hit us with a like, drop us a comment, subscribe. Let us know how you've used your wool blanket, how a wool blanket has come in handy for you and maybe saved your butt in certain situations. So I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, come visit us in store if you're here local or visit us online at www.gearupfl.com. And uh, drop a comment. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know any other videos you may or may want not want to see. And hit us with that like. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.